Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. This is some breaking news, a bulletin that absolutely had to come out today, given the urgency of it. So for those of you who are waiting for my Alien Week content, well, that's coming, but uh, breaking news like this is always going to take precedence on this channel, just so everybody knows. So a couple of articles have come out recently from some research Respected spaceflight journalists talking about the state of NASA. And things look very ugly there right now. The agency appears to be directionless. There's a lot of bad blood surging around the agency amongst the staff there. And low morale, the lowest morale apparently that's been reported in recent history at this agency. Again, all of this sort of behind the scenes, but there's very good reason for all of this to be happening because ever since Administrator Nelson stepped down, and by the way, I never thought that he was the best administrator in NASA's history or anything like that, but he at least was keeping the agency on target and continuing what his predecessor, Jim Bridenstine, um, had started. And by the way, Jim Bridenstine was Donald Trump's selection, the, uh, the administrator that he chose to take over NASA years ago and right at the beginning of his first term in office. And really, Nelson, for the most part, was just continuing his policies. And now those policies seem to be in great jeopardy. And not only that, it appears that Elon Musk and SpaceX, they don't just have a great deal of influence over this agency behind the scenes. It's become extremely obvious and out in the open. And and I'm just going to say it flat out. This is an unacceptable situation for a private company and a person who is not a government employee to be wielding this much influence over a government agency, regardless of what that agency is, regardless of who the president is. I don't care if Biden was doing this, I'd be saying exactly the same thing. And it is having a serious effect on the agency and its activities at the moment. Nobody seems to know what direction the agency is going in. Nobody seems to know what the fate of the various projects that NASA has been working on for years now. No one seems to know what's going to happen to them. NASA doesn't even know where the hell it's going now. Is it going to Mars? Is it going to the moon? Is it going to both? There is really no clear picture as to what NASA's mission is currently, and there's no sign that that's going to clear up anytime really soon, because Jared Isaacman, who's supposed to be heading up the agency next, he hasn't even started his confirmation process in the Senate. It's probably going to be a while before he takes over, and right now he hasn't been making any public posts as to what his intentions for the agency really are. So as a result, if you'll forgive the pun, NASA appears to be lost in space. In the course of this video, I'm going to be quoting extensively from two articles, one written by Eric Berger, who's perhaps the most well-known space flight journalist in the world right now, or at least in the United States, and also an article from Futurism, who, by the way, once reported on one of my videos, but the author of this article is Victor Tangerman. We'll start off with some quotes from Eric Berger. Like a lot of the rest of the federal government right now, NASA is reeling during the first turbulent days, rather, of the Trump administration. The last two weeks have brought a change in leadership in the form of interim administrator Janet Pitro, whose ascension was a surprise. Her first act was to tell agency employees to remove diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility contracts and to, quote, report, unquote, on anyone who did not carry out this order. Soon, civil servants began receiving emails from the U.S. Office of Personnel Management that some perceived as an effort to push them to resign. Now, once again, I am not an advocate for hiring people who are not qualified for the job just because of their racial background or anything, but NASA actually has a long 
history of diversity in the agency, indeed starting off over half a century ago with an all-female, all-black team of mathematicians who contributed tremendously to the Apollo program. Not sure if a team like that would survive the current situation at NASA, but in any event, just seems to be a strange thing for NASA to be focusing on so much right now when there's so much else to do. Then there are the actions of SpaceX founder Elon Musk. Last week, he sowed doubt by claiming that NASA had stranded astronauts on the space station. The astronauts are perfectly safe and have a ride home. Incidentally, I released a retraction about that issue. Once again, I apologize for contributing to that sensationalistic story because SUNY Williams and her extremely long spacewalks that she's carried out over the last few weeks has proven definitively that she is not in in need of being rescued. In any event, he owns the space agency's most important contractor, of course, Elon Musk that is, and in recent weeks has become deeply enmeshed in operating the U.S. government through his Department of Government Efficiency. For some NASA employees, whether or not that is true, there is now an uncomfortable sense that they are working for Musk and to dole out contracts to SpaceX. And by the way, that concern was was heightened last Friday when Petro announced that the longtime SpaceX employee named Michael Altenhofen had joined the agency, quote, as a senior advisor to the NASA administrator, unquote. Altenhofen is an accomplished engineer who interned at NASA back in 2005, but has spent the last 15 years at SpaceX, most recently as a leader of the human spaceflight programs. He certainly brings expertise, but his hiring raises concerns about SpaceX's influence over NASA operations. Petro is not responding to a request for comments, by the way, about potential conflicts of interest and the scope of Altenhofen's involvement. It really, really looks crooked to me, and I hate to use this kind of wording, but this is a fellow who, as far as I know, still works for SpaceX or was working for them very recently for 15 years, and now all of a sudden has a position of senior advisor, not just an advisor, not just a new employee, but somebody who's going to be whispering in the new NASA administrator's ear. I really don't like the look of that at all. In any event, uh, we will continue with the article. Quote, I spent this weekend talking and texting with NASA sources at various centers around the country, and the overriding message is that morale at the agency is, quote, absurdly low. Meetings between civil servants and their leadership, such as an all-hands gathering at NASA's Langley Research Center in Virginia recently, have been fraught with tension. No one knows what will happen next, but there are quite a number of rumors. For example, concerns about the possibility of a 30% budget cut to the agency, which would be utterly devastating to NASA and all of their programs. Also taking astronauts off of Artemis II, canceling the SLS and more. And there is a kernel of truth to some of these rumors, but no final policy decisions have been made. But there are some very specific programs that are in limbo right now, very important projects. For example, what to do about the Artemis program. There's no question that the incoming administration is contemplating major changes to NASA's lunar return plans. This may include scrapping all of the existing missions or perhaps flying Artemis in two and three, mostly as as is, but a big question is how large will NASA's pivot to Mars be and how many resources will be pulled away from lunar settlement to send humans to Mars, which is preferred by both Trump and Musk. And then of course, the Lunar Gateway, which you're looking at right now. Will it fly or die? Right now, there's definitely a preference for the Lunar Gateway to be at least moved. A lot of people don't like this near rectilinear halo orbit that it's assigned to being at, but others are saying that the Gateway should be canceled outright, which I believe would be an enormous mistake. I think we need a staging effort to support a 
permanent human presence on the moon. I mean, if you're just going back to the moon to put down a flag and footprints again, then yeah, you don't need it. But otherwise, I think a space station is absolutely critical to support a permanent human presence on the moon and also to keep an eye on what the Chinese might be doing because they're going to be establishing their own base by 2030 or at least landing on the moon by 2030. Also, what to do with the ISS and identify a coherent commercial strategy. That's a very big thing. Trump wants to lean into commercial space. That does indeed make sense, but the agency must also identify in which areas this approach works and which it does not. For example, there's no commercial return on building big space telescopes or interplanetary probes like Voyager 1 and 2. Commercial space can definitely help by bringing down the cost of launch and satellite components, but it is absolutely vital that NASA not lose its critical role in the field of space science and space exploration. For example, perhaps the biggest current exploration program going on right now is deciding the fate of the multi-billion dollar Mars sample return plan. And honestly, I think Nelson dropped the ball there. I think he should have made the decision as to how NASA was going to go forward because he had a number of very good proposals, including a very inexpensive proposal from Rocket Lab, but he didn't make the decision. And now the most likely outcome is cancellation, which once again, I think is a huge mistake. If we are going to Mars in the very near future, we need to get a good idea of what astronauts are going to be facing there. If there are microbes on Mars, it would be nice to get an idea of what sorts of microbes microbes there are there before astronauts are going to be exposed to possibly nasty alien pathogens. So this, in my opinion, is an absolutely vital program if we're going to Mars in the near future, and yet I think it's very likely going to get canceled. And there is no leadership currently at NASA right now. As I said before, Jared Isaacman's hearing in the U.S. Senate is unlikely to occur before the second half of February, and it may not even happen that soon. Some questions remain about this this guy. He's very close to SpaceX, obviously, having flown two Dragon missions, and he is paid and possibly still owes millions of dollars to SpaceX for the Polaris program of missions he has signed up for. So there could be some serious financial entanglements here. But Eric Berger does mention some positive things as well. Over the last five years, Isaacman has become a known commodity in the space community and his nomination has been cheered by most space organizations. And those who have met him have found Isaacman to be earnest and interested in spaceflight. I can definitely attest to that. I did meet him about a year ago at a convention in Washington, D.C. He's very passionate about space flight, so I think that he could be a good leader for the organization as long as SpaceX doesn't wield too much influence over the guy. And once again, not too thrilled about a SpaceX employee being a senior advisor to the administrator. But all of that having been said, it's time for Jared Isaacman to get confirmed by the Senate and take the reins and start getting giving NASA some direction because right now in this leadership vacuum, it appears that Elon Musk is calling the shots for this agency. And right now, NASA doesn't seem to have any direction at all. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I have a new exclusive video coming out this month about Project Blue Book, some really fascinating stuff that I had never Ever heard of before, all from the memoirs of the former chief of this agency. So if that's something you're interested in, all the details are in the description. Thanks again, and as always, stay angry about space.